Hey everyone, welcome back. Today we're tackling a leak code problem called, find minimum time to reach last room 1. It sounds like a maze or a dungeon crawl, and it kind of is. We'll break down what the problem asks for, explore how to solve it, and look at some code. Ready? Let's get started. So here's the setup. We're given a grid of rooms, like a little dungeon. Each room, let's say at row I and column J, has a special number called move time. This number is important. It tells us the earliest time we can start moving into that specific room, I, J. We begin our adventure in the top left room, which is 0, 0, and we start right at time 0. Our goal? To reach the bottom right room, N1, M1. Moving from one room to an adjacent room, that is, one sharing a wall, either up, down, left or right, always takes exactly one second of travel time. The tricky part is that move time constraint we need to find the absolute minimum time to arrive at that final room. Let's walk through the first example. Imagine move time is huge in 0, 4, 4, 4. We want to get from 0, 0 to 1, 1. We start at 0, 0 at time 0. Let's say we try to go from 0, 0 to 1, 0. The move time to enter room 1, 0 is 4. We arrived at 0, 0 at time 0. So, the earliest we can start moving towards 1, 0 is the maximum of our arrival time at 0, 0, which is 0, and the move time for 1, 0, which is 4. So, max 0, 4 is 4. It takes 1 second to travel, so we arrive at 1, 0, at time 4, plus 1 equals 5. Now we're at 1, 0, at time 5. We want to go to 1, 1. The move time to enter room 1, 1 is 4. We arrived at 1, 0, at time 5. So the earliest we can start moving towards 1, 1, is max, 5, 4, which is 5. Travel takes 1 second, so we arrive at 1, 1, at time, 5 plus 1, equals 6. And that's our destination, so the minimum time, is 6. Okay, so when we hear minimum time or shortest path on a grid, what usually comes to mind? For me it's often something like Dijkstra's algorithm, or breadth first search. The rooms can be thought of as points, or nodes, in a network. And moving between rooms? Those are the connections, or edges. The tricky bit here, is that the to use a connection isn't just a fixed number. It depends on when we arrive at the current room, and what the move time restriction is for the next room. Dijkstra's algorithm is really good for these kinds of problems where we want the shortest path and edge weights are non-negative, which times are. So how do we adapt Dijkstra's for this? The main thing is how we calculate the time to get to the next room. Let's say we're in a room, let's call it the current room, and we know the earliest time we could have possibly arrived there. Now we look at an adjacent room, the next room. This next room has its own move time value, which is the earliest time we're allowed to even begin our journey towards it. So, to figure out when we can actually leave our current room to go to the next one, we have to wait until both conditions are met. We must have arrived at the current room, and it must be late enough according to the next move time. So, we take the maximum of these two times. Once we know this departure time, the travel itself is quick, just one second. So we add one to that departure time, and that's when we'll arrive at the next room. We'll use a min priority queue, which is just a fancy list, that always gives us the room we can reach in the shortest amount of time so far. Alright, here's the Python code that puts this idea into action. It might look like a bit much at first, but don't worry, we'll go through the key parts piece by piece. The general idea is standard Dijkstra's, but with that special time calculation for moving between rooms. First up, we get the dimensions of our grid, n rows and m columns. There's a quick check. If the grid is just one by one, we're already at the destination, so time taken is zero. Then, we create a 2D list called min underscore arrival underscore time. This will store the earliest time we've found so far to reach each room. We initialize all these times to infinity basically saying we haven't found a path yet. But for our starting room, 0, 0, we set its arrival time to 0, because that's when we begin. We also set up our priority queue, PQ. It starts with just one item. Our starting position, 0, 0, with its arrival time of 0. And those, Dr. DC lists? They're just helpers to easily find neighbor coordinates. Up, down, left and right. Now for the main part of Dijkstra's, the loop. This loop keeps running as long as there are rooms in our priority queue to explore. In each step we pop the room that has the smallest arrival time from the priority queue. This gives us the current time we arrived at this cell. Pragafasi. We do a quick check, 
If the time we just popped is actually worse than a time we've already recorded for this room, it means we found a longer path to it, so we just ignore it and continue. Then, the exciting part, if the current room Shilly is our target, the bottom right corner, then we've done it, we've found the minimum time to reach it, so we return that time. If we haven't reached the target yet, we need to explore the neighbors of our current room, we loop through our four directions. For each potential neighbor, we first make sure it's actually inside the grid, can't go walking off the map. And here's the heart of the logic, calculating the arrival time at this neighbor. The time we can start moving towards the neighbor is, like we discussed, the maximum of when we arrived at our current cell, and the move time required to enter the neighboring cell. Once we have this time underscore to underscore start underscore moving underscore to underscore neighbor, we add one second for the travel itself to get time underscore neighbor underscore arrival. Finally, if this newly calculated time underscore neighbor underscore arrival is better, meaning smaller, than any previously recorded time to reach this neighbor, we update it. We store this new better time in our min underscore arrival underscore timetable and add the neighbor with its new arrival time to our priority queue to be explored later. So how efficient is this approach? For time complexity, it's about quote 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 big O of n times m times log of n times m's. Here, n is the number of rows and m is the number of columns. Basically, n times m is the total number of rooms. Each room gets processed by our priority queue and those queue operations adding or removing take logarithmic time relative to the queue's size. For space complexity, we're using extra memory mainly for two things, that min underscore arrival underscore time grid, which is n by m, and the priority queue, which in the worst case could hold all the rooms. So that's big O of n times m space. This is pretty standard for Dijkstra's on a grid. So, to wrap things up, this problem was all about finding the quickest way through a grid, with a special time constraint for entering each room. We saw that Dijkstra's algorithm is perfect for this, once we figured out how to calculate the OR time to move between rooms. That key formula was, the arrival time at the next room is 1, plus the maximum of your arrival time at the current room, and the move time restriction of that next room. And using a priority queue made sure we always explored the path that looked best so far. It's a neat application of a classic algorithm. Hope that breakdown made sense and helped you understand the problem and solution. If it did, feel free to hit that like button, or maybe subscribe for more leak code explanations. If you have any questions or other ways to solve it, drop a comment below, I'd love to hear it. And, of course, if you're feeling extra generous, the Boba Fund is always open for contributions. Thanks for watching, keep practicing, and I'll catch you in the next one. Happy coding!